So good morning and welcome to the 73rd Annual Current Strategy Forum. So now to officially kick off the program, it is an honor for me to introduce you to Rear Admiral Peter A. Garvin, the 58th President of the Naval War College. Admiral. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for that mercifully short introduction. I always find it rather, rather humorous if, if they go into reading your entire bio, and by the end, most folks are asleep. Um, but thank you for that. And it is just absolutely wonderful to be here with you. Um, apologies for the traffic. Uh, that is sort of the nature of the beast when we have everybody try to get in at exactly the same time. But at least the weather is absolutely fantastic. It is a fine Navy day and a start of a fantastic week. It is so wonderful to see you all. Now, since this series started in 1949, the world has certainly changed in many, many ways. And while the nature of war endures, the character is certainly changing at an accelerating pace. But the purpose of this event has remained constant, to provide the opportunity for the nation's public servants, scholars, captains of industry, and military officers to join with the student body of the Naval War College to present a capstone event focusing on future strategies for America, her allies, and partners. This year's theme is America's sea power and maritime statecraft. I'd like to start by thanking all of our distinguished guests and visitors that are joining us for the event, particularly our CNO distinguished fellows, Admiral Barrera, Admiral Verma, great to see you, sirs. Our keynote speakers, Mr. Stephen Brock, Mr. David Sanger, Dr. Andy Krepinevich, Vice Admiral Dan Dwyer, Dr. Elizabeth Economy, and Lieutenant General Greg Olson. Our panelists and moderators, Dr. Jim Holmes, Dr. Derek Reverend, Dr. John Maurer, Dr. Paul Kennedy, Dr. Dr. Toshi Yoshihara, Dr. Emily Goodman, Goldman, Professor Kate Walsh, Dr. Aaron Friedberg, or Friedberg, Dr. Sarah Kirchberger, and Dr. Michael Hanlon. I would also like to take a moment to thank the Naval War College Foundation, its chairman, Dan Holland, Vice Chairman, A.B. Cruz, as well as the CEO and President, George Lang. Thank you for the incredible support for not only this event, but throughout the year. The foundation does provide that margin of excellence that takes this War College from good to great. In the audience, we have students from both the senior and the intermediate level of course here. 93 international students are included in that group with representing 57 nations. Also joining us today is a select group of 300 civilian guests that have agreed to share their precious time with us to participate, to help us shape and develop our future leaders. Thank you all for being here. Now I'll ask each student to take the time to engage whenever you encounter our distinguished visitors across the campus. Now I know it is graduation week. This is a busy week for all of you. And for most, preparing to graduate Friday and move on to your next duty station is consuming an awful lot of time and energy. But consider this, wherever you're going, whatever the next journey delivers to you, it is unlikely that the pace will be any slower. So you must continue to make time to think, to read, to listen, to understand, consider other perspectives, listen to those alternative views, be curious, ask questions, engage in the discussion, whatever it is. This is what will make you better leaders, better problem solvers, better decision makers, and without hyperbole, the safe, safety, security, and prosperity of our globe depends on it. The challenges are many. Consider the dynamic geopolitical environment of today. We face the first land war in Europe in 30 years, going back to the Bosnian conflict, the largest conflict in the Levant in 50 years, going back to the Yom Kippur War, and in the Red Sea, for the first time in history, our ships are facing anti-ship ballistic missiles and drones. The complexity of the global security environment is significant, perhaps even unprecedented. So in his address at Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government in September, Secretary Del Toro called for a new maritime statecraft to prevail in an era of intense strategic competition. During his speech, Secretary Del Toro stated that maritime statecraft, in a broad sense, encompasses not only naval diplomacy, but a national whole of government effort to build comprehensive US and allied maritime power, both commercial and naval. So now to prepare you to face the issues as described by the secretary and others, the college has assembled an outstanding lineup of keynote speakers and panelists 
from across the country and the world. In reading their biographies, you gain an appreciation for their broad expertise, deep knowledge, and incredible accomplishments. What these leading minds have spoken about and published informs and shapes the decisions of our leaders. These experts seek to make sense of the fog and friction that bedevils strategic decision making. So over the next two days, you will see that there is no shortage of great minds devoted to thinking through the complex international problems before us and offering advice about what our strategy could be and should be in the years ahead. So over the course, course of this program, students, please listen carefully, be intellectually curious, ask questions, engage your mind, and grow. 